Hey Jaco, I'm making a trivia type template and what I wanted to show you is how to get the end result. Now the template looks something like this, it is a work in progress, but at the end we have four answers and only one can be correct, or maybe multiple, but this is done automatically. So I will show you how you can highlight the text automatically, so get this from this. Now let's get digital. So I will show you this in a new Fusion composition, go to the media pool, right click, make a new one, put it onto a timeline, we can extend it and go into the Fusion page. I will show you how you can quickly do this, so I'll make one text, I'll have a background, switch the inputs, Control T, so the background is in the back, and lower the opacity, but if this is the last node, we could also set this to be a background color. Now for the text, because we want to animate it, I'll also add a transfer node. Now let's say that this will be an answer, so I could rename it, answer1, and you press F2 to get the rename tool. So type in answer1, you can set the text to what you want. So now you have the text, how do you get the highlight in the back? Well to do that, we'll have to go to the shadings tab, I've enabled option 2, this is an outline, but you could also enable option 3, 4, and any other that you want. In this case, I'll enable this one. We can call it fill. You have to enable the fill. The default color is red. We can change it. We'll need to extend the horizontal value. By how much? I don't know. If I zoom in, this is what we have. This will also depend on the font that you choose. So maybe we'll need 6. Let's go with 8, and extend vertical, maybe something like this. We can also round this a little bit. Let me go back to the text. So the answer could also be in two lines, so you may need to adjust the line spacing. And again, this will depend on the font that you choose. Now, if you want to animate right on function, you can also do that, but I want to show you something else. You will, in the shading tab, leave the level to character, Otherwise, if you have text, you will obviously need to adjust the horizontal and vertical. I've put this back to default, set this to text, so we see what the results we get. So this is what you get. If I increase this in horizontal, so this is what you can expect if you have different kind of levels. So in this case, I'll just leave it to a character and put this back to 8 and 4. So this can be my pop-up. Now what I've also done is I've actually added a second text. So I can maybe copy this one, rename it answer1 number. Then we need to position it in the layout. Now you can have the shading, but you can also disable it. And then in the transform, we can adjust the whole size and the position. I've also adjusted the pivot point. To do the animation, I've adjusted it to the number. So this is the pivot point that I'm moving. And now that I've moved it, if I make an animation in the size, the size will pop up from the number. Now to make the quick animation, let me just show you. I'll go to frame 20. I'll keyframe the value of the size at the zero. The animation will end maybe in 12 frames. The size will be one. And if I want to make a pop animation, I'll maybe go to this frame, 28, and set the size to, let's see, 1.2. Maybe this is a bit big, because it goes outside of the screen. Maybe 1.1. Let's see how the animation looks like. Maybe it's just a tiny bit too slow. So you can go to the keyframe, enable this show only selected tools, so you don't see all of the nodes. Select the node that has the animation, in this case transform, and I have animated the size. So I can zoom in by holding control and using the mouse scroll wheel. And I need to reposition these two keyframes a bit closer. And now the animation is a lot more snappier. Now what I'll do is I can make four copies. Now I'll just make one copy, but you can make as many copies as you'll have answers. Also rename the nodes, so you'll have an easier time when you make the macro. You can combine each section, 
with the merge node but what I'll do is I'll actually use multi-merge and you can use shift space to open the select tools. Now the multi-merge node is a new node that was introduced in DaVinci Resolve 18.5. And now instead of this one, I can use just this merge that will be able to connect all of the other inputs. Now in this case, I have the background connected in the back and as you can see, it's actually not visible. So that's why I've put the background to this input. And now in the merge node, let me just position this one. This one will be positioned down. Now in the multi-merge node, I could simply disable them. So you can see that that works. Now I could animate individual layers. So answer one, two, three, four, and as many as you have. But I also don't have access to the pivot point. And if I wanted to do the animation, I would have to do it for each individual layer. That is why I've used the transfer node. So I can only do it once and then copy everything and the animation will be the same. And I only need to change the values. Now, speaking of the values, in the answer, I want to change the shading color. Now, how that could be done is in the image, it takes color image. What the heck is that? Well, this could be a background node. So in this one, answer one, you can simply connect it and it will connect. And as you can see, it changed the color. You could also type this in, the name of the node, background two, because it is expecting a tool. A tool is a node. But what's interesting to me, and this would make it really fast, is that you can right click, make an expression. I will copy the name of this node and put it down. And you would expect that this works, but it doesn't. As you can see, if I now click away from this node and select it back, I don't have any expression. So in this case, this does not work, which is a shame. You can still type in the name of the node, the background, but you want to be able to change from three different colors, let's say. So you have this one, which is constant. And then at the end, you have an answer. You have false answers and the real answer. And each answer has to be able to switch between the three colors. Now, what you could do is have three different background nodes and rename them. So F2 and maybe this one will be answer true answer false and this one will be answer default then simply change the color to what you need so maybe in this case this one will be the orange one this one will be default false will be some kind of a gray one and the true one will be some kind of a greenish one so now i have three colors and i need to be able to connect them to this background node and i actually can use expressions so each channel has an expression that you can apply. Now what I'll do is I'll simply select this node, pin it, so I can simply connect these values to this node. And now as you can see, this background node has the same values as this one. But I need to be able to change these values between these three nodes. And how I'll do that is with an actual expression. Now what would the expression look like? It would look like this, if, with two eyes, and then you have to decide when the background would change in time. So this would be your animation. In this case, I have 512 frames, and maybe I want the animation to make the switch at frame, let's say 400. So in this case, I'll type in time. Time is the current playhead position. So in this case, it's 400 but it will go from frame zero. So if time is less than 400, in that case, we want to be able to display the default one. So we'll have ends default. I'll just make it simple for now because we'll have to change the code a bit later. So when the time is less than 400, it will display default, but after this frame or when it comes to frame 400, it will switch between either answer true and answer false. Now, if I only needed to make one switch, 
from let's say default to false or simply type in like so but because I have to make a decision if this will be false or true I have to make another if statement inside here so if and now we have to check some condition that I don't have at the moment and we'll check if answer one is true so let me type in answer one and this will be equals true and true in this case will be one and if it is false it will be zero and this is because we'll have a checkbox so if this is one then we will have answer true and if this is zero meaning that it will be unchecked it will be answer false now this is the base code but we can just put in the name of the notes now this should work in the answer one as i've showed you with the color image but it doesn't because i have a feeling this just expects to have a background node inside immediately not within an expression so we'll have to change this a little bit and the way we'll change it is like so so this one has answer true top left red top left green and top left blue so let me take this section and fix the code a little bit so we'll have top left red like so and like so now this is a section just for the red color now this code shouldn't work but it does why does it work it works because this value is not defined so because we don't have this value it is automatically set to false but what i'll do is i'll change the name and i'll just type in 01 just so i make sure that it doesn't interfere with the other fusion composition which does have the name answer one so let me just fix this one and now how do i get this answer one well let me show you i'll make a custom tool but you can add this to any tool that you want custom tool i won't be changing anything so i will right click on the custom tool and go to edit controls inside here i will give this a name the name of this control will be answer 01 i want to put this to this section controls so i'll select controls and this will be a checkbox so this is answer one and because i only made two selections I'll make another one so edit controls this will be answer 02 to the controls and a checkbox so now i have two options so now in the custom tool i will pin it so i can click the selection and in the background node i should be now able to see the changes now the value of the red channel is not changing even though i can enable and disable the checkbox and what's the issue well this answer if i hover over it and you look in the bottom left right here you will see that it says custom tool one dot answer zero one so this has to be changed to custom tool one dot answer zero one so i will now copy this expression paste it in and now when i change this the value changes let's see something's amiss it's not tool it's tool and now as you can see the value is changing it's not by a lot and you don't see any difference but once all of the values are changing we will see the difference so this is not tall it's tool now i'll copy this and what we need to do is change it for the other channels so the green channel is top green i'll just copy this and this one will be top left blue now copy the final expression paste it in the green and the blue channels and this is the result that we get we can do this exactly the same for the second option the only thing that we need to do is change this to answer 02 but now that you have the expressions where do you put them well you could make another background node and connect it to the answer 2 and put them in like so but instead what you can also actually do is not use a background node and simply go to each individual answer go to the shadings tab and instead of the image simply leave it to solid 
and you can also use expressions here. So this will skip the background node and you will put in the expression values here. So this will be blue channel, the green channel and the red channel. Now if I go to the custom tool, you can see that it does exactly the same thing. Now while it would be ideal if this image tool would be able to take in an expression and simply switch between one of the background nodes, it doesn't, we can still make it work, but we have to not select the tool, but instead do it in the solid and change the background in this way. So don't actually use a background node. And now lastly, because you made an awesome animation and you want to change it up just a little bit, what you can do is go to keyframes, select the animation that you want to change, maybe select the first one so you can see where it ends, then go to the second one, select all of the keyframes and move them so you can have an animation like this. Maybe speed up just a little bit. And why is the quality bad? That's because I have the timeline resolution set to quarter. And that is how I can change the highlighted fill color of the text node inside the fusion composition so you can make it into a template. And when you do have a template with a bunch of answers, you will simply be able to check the answer that you want. And this can also be used if you have a trick question with multiple correct answers because you can enable all of the answers that are correct and all of them will change the color to in this case the green one and why this text didn't change the color is because I've deleted the background node that I've previously connected to this answer node. So now I would simply need to make the expressions as I've done in the answer too. So I would have to paste these expressions in that refer the answer 01 and then that would also work. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, you know what to do. I'm Simon, until next time, Jacko, keep it digital.